welcome to another edition of the Bridge Series, a focus on international residents in Japan, doing work which helps the community or society or the planet. Uh, today we're talking to Melissa Costa. She's a co-founder of Cyclo Magazine, a magazine which focuses on introducing science and sustainable business practices, products and services to the general public. admirer of yours online for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course um so my name is melissa uh i was born in mexico but from the age of six i lived in the united states i lived in the west coast uh oregon state uh and i was raised there most of my life i came to japan about three years ago to study at the University of Tsukuba in Ibaraki. Yeah. I was reading your, your article, your interview with one of the professors. So you were studying mm -hmm. uh, molecular plant biology, is that right? Yes, that Oh is my correct. gosh, that sounds so hard. Was it super hard? <laughs> uh, I guess when you think about just the word, right, it seems very complicated, but, you know, once you get into the world of, you know, science and research, it's not that bad. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. It's, so it must be so interesting, especially because your passion seems to be about the environment and mm. a lot of your projects, of course, centered on raising awareness and getting people active. Um, can you talk a little bit about your magazine that you started? Of course, yeah. So uh, I have a web magazine online. It's called Ciclo. Um, and it's a project that my husband and I started uh, this April of this year. Uh, everything I learned during my studies at my university were mostly environmental related to agriculture, uh, especially. Um, and just from the things that I learned, I really became much more aware of, you know, all these environmental issues that are impacting us on a daily mm -hmm. basis. Um, that and also um, I had a connection in Mexico. One of my friends over there, she, uh, her husband uh, is Japanese and she wanted to come to Japan to start some sort of business over here related to the plastic pollution and the environmental problems. Okay. Um, so she wanted to bring over um, plastic pellets made out of avocado seeds from the company made uh, called Biofase. Um, and she wanted to import these into Japan. So she wanted to somehow make a collaboration between me and her, her and somehow start a business doing that. Um, so that's how the whole thing about plastics came into my mind. And I wanted to do a lot of research pertaining to how conventional plastics are made, what machinery is used, um, what are the methods used, all the different types of plastic. And that's when I got more into learning more deeply about bioplastics and biodegradable plastics and yeah, what the difference fantastic. between all those things are. And when I went into deeper research, I found out that actually this um, bioplastic made out of avocado seeds, it's made out of PLA, so polylactic acid. Um, PLA is not so bad if you can degrade it and dispose of it properly. Okay. Um, especially if they need industrial type composting facilities, uh, okay. which Japan doesn't have. So then I realized, well, if we're going to market this item as a great thing, it doesn't use food sources to make this product. It's actually food waste because we don't consume right. the seeds yeah. of the avocado. But it's just going to lead to the same problem as regular plastic. Um, so because then it won't, I, it won't biodegrade naturally. Of course, yes. It'll be just as strong as regular plastic. Right. Um, so then I thought, okay, well, if this isn't an answer or a solution to the problem here, then what else can we do to um, 
you know, give all of this information out that I just learned myself to, you know, regular people, the consumers, the people yep. who, you know, don't know this information. So that's when my husband and I thought, well, let's make a website and kind of just put this information out there. Um, and it really helps because he's a freelance graphic designer. So he helped me with all oh, of Okay. Because your stuff. website is really beautiful. It's Thank gorgeous. You. Yeah, really nice to look at. Um, I just had a look at today about the upcycling kimono article that you put up. I mean, mm. the photos and everything are gorgeous. Are you taking photog- Are you taking photos as well? Um, for that lady, uh, Mikan, uh, uh, I didn't. I, she was uh, in Kyoto. She actually okay. invited me to go, but I I wasn't able to go to one of her workshops. Um, but she's actually moved in closer to me in Miyazaki. Okay. Uh, but right now she's in Australia, so we might be able to meet up and, you know, actually take some photos of her work. But no, those were photos that she she gave me. But for the interview with my professor and things like that, that I actually go and meet people, those are all photos that we've taken. Yeah, wonderful. And the interview with your professor was so interesting. And people said, oh, plastic pollution in Japan isn't so bad. They've created this uh, bacteria that eats the plastic, mm. you know, but that that was something students, I think, discovered in 2016. But nothing has happened with that yet. And uh, the problem is overwhelming. So come on, let's just stop using so much plastic. Surely that's a more yeah. simple solution instead yeah. of waiting for some magic bullet, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, actually, my university is also doing the studies with the bacteria that eats plastic, but it's not all types of plastic. It's only PET plastic. Um, and like you said, it's not going to be so the solution for, the water for bottles. Every... Yeah, yeah. And it's only done in small you know, laboratory size type okay. of work right now. It's yeah. not in a state where it could be, you know, in a manufacturing facility in large quantities. So, and then yeah, there it's was, still very... There was news sorry. recently in the UK of a uh, young scientist who discovered how to pull microplastics out of water, right? So this is, mm. is all fantastic research to be done mm. for sure. But yeah. when it comes to what can we do right now, of course, mm. refuse reuse reduce definitely yeah. right it's, yeah um, yeah of course we have big hopes for science in the future but we we have to mm. make changes right now i think yeah yeah you're totally right yeah as consumers i think we have a huge huge um we have huge power over this problem we just have to kind of become aware and then act from from that awareness so I think that's what's lacking the most in Japan. It's awareness. A lot of awareness is not just not there. Um, so that's the thing we wanted to uh, target with our magazine, not just uh, English speakers, because I know the foreign people who live in Japan are really quite aware of the issue. It's more aiming towards the Japanese people. So our magazine is both in Japanese and English. That's wonderful. That we are you are aim. you doing that yourself? Are you bilingual? Um, I'm not at a point where it's perfect enough to write. My <laughs> husband does the translating and oh. I do the English part. So we kind of help each other on that. That's um, a great yeah. collaboration. You guys are a good yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked out really well. Do you so. also speak Spanish? Could you put it into Spanish as well? In the yeah, future? yeah, I definitely could. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, we've also, I have a friend who's in Mexico and she uh, just started her own online magazine in Mexico, talking more about Asian culture and Asian, okay. uh, Japanese, Korean, and she's featured our, our stuff in her magazine as well. And a lot of people from Mexico mm-hmm. have, you know, we've had good feedback from them as well. So yeah, I think in the future, that'd be very interesting to also do a Spanish version as well. Yeah, for sure. And recently you did the Amazon collecting for the Amazon campaign. Can you talk a little bit about that? Congratulations, you got your goal. That's awesome. Yeah, I I didn't know we would make it, but we did. Um, A lot of people came, yeah, came through and yeah, we're really, really happy about that. Um, Yeah, just, 
you know, from hearing the news about the whole Amazon burning and the president not really caring about it, like I, I felt like I needed to at least do something, yeah. you know, not just I'll see it and do nothing. So I'm like, okay, well, we can just do a fundraiser on Facebook for everyone to easily just donate if they like or share. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of people, um, a lot of donors and people just sharing. And I think that's that's the best part. I think the thing is that I wanted to spread more awareness of what was going on over there and, you know, kind of tell people, well, we can do something, you know, anything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're really happy about that. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's so important, right, to give people a chance to be engaged with the problem right like whether mm. it's a, a cleanup activity like even one hour cleanup activity or joining an event or like the upcoming september 20th climate march you know mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. being a little bit active makes you really think about your own priorities and your own life and how you yeah. might make small changes which if all of us did might be big changes right yeah exactly yeah um, so right now we're, we moved from Tokyo to Fukuoka, so we're in Fukuoka now, and I kind of want to start something over here, like I really like how you're doing your cleanups over there in Hiroshima, um, but it definitely is going to take some time to build a community over here because, you know, we just came fresh, don't really know anyone over here. Um, well, I but can introduce we... you to some people because I know a few people in Fukuoka who oh, said really? that they are interested in doing cleanups. So now that mm -hmm. you're there, I think definitely we can get something started. I'm happy to support yeah. you, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Like start some sort of community over here too it would be really good. Yeah. Um, I, I would suggest just choose a day once a month, like the, th mm -hmm. we choose the third Sunday of every month and just one hour, just make it a central location where there's always something to pick up and uh, mm -hmm. just keep it easy like that. And then people start uh, telling friends. And then if it's always the same place, it's easy to just show up. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Not like Japanese, like sporting events that you have to register like six months in advance or, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. there's just every certain day, every month, mm -hmm. this time, and then people are like, oh, it's that time. Oh, let's go. You know, we could just show mm -hmm. up. Something That's like that. Yeah. yeah. But you're fresh yeah. to the city. So I'll try to get some people who know the city better in touch with you. Maybe you guys can choose a good place. Mm, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah. you're not so far from me. So I'd love to come and support you guys and join in. Yeah. Yeah, sure. please. <laughs> I've never been to Hiroshima either. My husband is actually from Shikoku. He's from oh. Ehime. So I, I've visited all of Shikoku Island, but I haven't been to the area around Hiroshima. So yeah. Well, we're yeah, not maybe. so far away. Yeah. Only That's about true. an hour by Shinkansen. So. Ooh, okay. That's nice to know. Please come and visit. Yeah. Is there is there any project in particular that you're quite passionate about? Passionate about? You want to talk about a little bit right now? Yeah, of course. Um, so with the whole before coming to Fukuoka, we did the uh, pitch night for Social Innovation Japan, and what we wanted to pitch the most that night was um, our picture book project. So our picture book project is something we wanted to start in order to, we've noticed that when we go to these events, we kind of see the same people to these events, to these zero waste events. And we really thought that we need to reach beyond this whole community that you know we've already um, been into. And that is just the general public, like families, parents, kids, um, and we thought, what's the best way to do that than making it in a fun, easy and way to understand and kind of uh, engage more families and kids as well. So we want to make a picture book called Life of Plastics to mm -hmm. talk about um, the life cycle of plastics um, and specifically of the little soy sauce 
bottles for okay uh, that are in bentos so yeah. we want to talk about the story of that little plastic bottle and how it was made and only used once and then it ended up going into the ocean turning into microplastic things like that um, that sounds great That's yeah, a great so, idea thank you so yeah with all the whole move move thing we kind of are still on a standby but we want to make a crowdfunding page to kind of get that project going mm -hmm. um, and for also people to pre-order the book through the crowdfunding page um, so yeah that's a little project that we want to start and the cool thing about it is our idea is to kind of use plastic waste to create the illustrations for the book kind of like I don't know if you know the um, author for kids books called Eric Carle like mm -hmm. the hungry caterpillar of course, of course yeah yeah those are classics so something along those lines kind of like cut out the the characters and something yeah, like great. that but, but yeah do so you have a are you searching for an artist to do that for you guys or you've got somebody uh, in mind no, my husband would probably be doing the whole uh, art direction of the book. Wow, um, I'll, I'll probably do more of the advertising and the whole coordinating type thing. Yeah, networking and stuff. It's also, okay. if you're doing a crowdfunding, I'm sure you know, but it's also great to have a good video where you're mm. introducing it by video. Videos, yeah. videos is the future, right, of all social yeah. marketing. Of course. Yeah, we actually did have a video all set up. We just actually need to start making the page and everything. So wonderful. Yeah. That's very exciting. I'm very excited. Yeah. And of course, I will help you promote and get the word out about that. That's a wonderful Thank project. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate wow, it. Wow, big move, big change from Tokyo to Fukuoka. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, but I really like it here. I think it's a different vibe than Tokyo, and I think there's a lot of um, opportunities over here, especially because Fukuoka really wants to get going with like startups or innovative ideas that the city itself really supports people who want to do that. So I think we can start something over here, which is exciting. Yeah, great, that is really exciting. I, I lived in Kyushu for three years, and we would mm. always visit Fukuoka as the big city because we were living in Uita, really small. Oh. And uh, we would go to Fukuoka and we would buy bread because at the time they didn't really have much variety of bread. Or, you know, oh. like that was our experience of the big city, Fukuoka. Mm. And I went recently and it's it's gotten so much better. You know, it's just mm -hmm. such a great city. Got a, a lot of big parks, big events. It's yeah. got a big city vibe, but it's also got beaches and, and parks and everything. So I'm, I'm sure you'll love it, it there. Yeah. I hope yeah. you're able to settle in, find your, find your place there. Yeah. So the reason I went recently was for a big vegan festival they had there. Mm, so yeah. We don't, we don't have a vegan festival in Hiroshima. You know, this is mm. something Fukuoka has that this whole region doesn't really have. So... I think Kyushu might be taking more steps forward than even this Hiroshima area. So, yeah, great. That's I hope you can get right in there with some great, great people and great ideas. Yeah, I hope so, too. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> Anything else you want to mention before we wrap it up? Uh, aside from the web magazine, we have um, Ciclo Catalog, which is a separate website. And Ciclo Catalog is, um, we wanted to make a collective of zero waste items or sustainable items sold in Japan or offered in Japan specifically. Because I myself, when I'm trying to find some alternatives for plastic free or sustainable items, it's really hard to find in Japan. They're mostly so from hard. abroad. So hard. Yeah. So the little stores or shops or people who handmade things that I found myself, I kind of want to also put out there for everyone else to have access to. Yep. Um, and what better way to kind of just have like a catalog of these things where you can just go um, look at it and whatever you want to find. It's neatly separated in categories. And yeah, so that's a separate, um, I guess, extension of SQL, SQL catalog. That's wonderful. Um, 
and yeah, so and necessary. Start- mm. Yeah, exactly. We found that there's nothing like that that we found in in Japan. So we thought it would be very helpful for people to kind of have that uh, access to information. Yeah, for sure. And that that is the kind of thing that that I hope I'm doing as well is by promoting people and promoting products and services which are focused on sustainability, helping the Mm. environment helping society, that by promoting those businesses or those people, that other businesses, other people will be inspired, you know, so it's it's all so wonderful that we're living in an age where social media is so accessible to everybody and mm. everybody uses it because it should be really easy to spread, spread the message and get yeah. people involved, right? Uh, but I actually moved here because I got a full-time job here. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to find some more balance with that. Uh, I really want to continue Seaglow. Uh, it's really grown in the last few months that we've started. So I don't want to let go of it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to, from now, I'm going to have to find some, some balance between work and, and my personal project. Oh, I mean, it's it's so worthwhile. So even if it's a mm-hmm. side project, it's a passion project. And then um, don't be don't be shy about inviting people to join in and help out, you know, because mm. they'll also be able to connect and feel something worthwhile as well. That's true. Yeah, yeah. we have we have a couple of collaborators who are uh, still university students who have helped us out um, a little bit. Um, but yeah, that may might be a good idea to. That's actually what I want to do here to kind of grow some sort of community over here if possible. It's it's yeah. really easy. My husband and I did that for many years. We were working full time. We were doing mm-hmm. get Hiroshima on the side. It was all volunteer, and it was something we were so passionate about and so happy to do because it was so necessary. But still, you get burnt out, and you know if mm-hmm. you don't have people around you who can step in when you need a break or you know that people getting involved makes a big difference so i I think the the momentum is around you definitely in fukuoka so i hope um you can start connecting with people that will help out yeah i hope so too so we'll we'll see from from here on now how it goes yeah yeah well thanks so much for taking time and talking to me and Best yeah. of luck with all your exciting projects, and Thank I'll put you. loads of links on the post and everything. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, let's Thank try you. to catch up again in a month's time, and you can tell me about Fukuoka more. Of course. Sounds yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.